Fight fans all over the world, it's Daddy P with Slap Pappy Gorilla. What? Hey, y'all, man. Eris Landy Lara stopped Danny Garcia. Well, I say stopped. It was considered as a technical decision, according to Box Rec. But, hey, it didn't go past nine rounds. I could tell you that. But, hey, this was the kicker, man. When Eris Landy Lara... Knocked down Danny Garcia in the ninth round. At the end of the ninth round, he did the Macarena. Well, I ain't going to say the Macarena. He did some kind of dance. He did his thing. He knocked him down, and he did his thing. So, uh, a lot of people call that disrespectful. Danny Garcia, I don't know how he took it, but uh, Danny Garcia was talking a little greasy before the fight. And when I say that, um, he wasn't like, overboard overboard but he was talking greasy he was talking like hey basically like Ares Landy Lara was sweet like he would just go move up to 160 pounds take the man belt and go around fighting with it because he I did remember him mentioning Terrence Crawford um how um he would be a good fight for Terrence Crawford once he get a belt at 160 if Terrence Crawford is serious about moving up to face Canelo Alvarez, then he should fight Danny Garcia. That's what Danny Garcia said. So these are the kind of conversations that Danny Garcia was having ahead of the Ares Landy Lara fight. You know, Ares Landy Lara, he speaks Spanish, but hey, you know, that kind of word gets out. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sure he heard about these types of, you know, we, we got social media and all this stuff now. So word gets around fast. But, um, hey, he knocked the man down and did the Macarena. He probably ain't care how disrespectful he looked because he probably felt disrespected by Danny Garcia. Listen, Danny Garcia went up to 160 pounds to face Laura for his belt, thinking that it was going to be sweet. He would just go get a belt and do his thing. I mean, that's what it was, man. But Ares Landy Lara got news for him. Ares Landy Lara say, hey, no way. And um, it was a lackluster fight for both guys, but um, Ares Landy Lara made his point and it stuck. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Danny Garcia, you know, on the other hand, he's had a great career. I mean, it looks like it may be time for him to hang up the gloves, man. I know he he probably cannot make 147 again. You know what I'm saying? And 154, you got some some killers there, man. And um, 160 just showed you, hey, look, you probably need to go ahead and hang up the gloves. You had a good run. Um, he's a champion in two different weight classes. He was a champion at 140. He was a champion at 147. He had a great run at 140 pounds. You know, he shocked a lot of people, and he went a lot further than a lot of people felt um, he would go, you know. Uh, when he beat Amir Khan, that was phenomenal, knocked him out. Um, also, he knocked out Amir Khan when a whole lot of people hadn't knocked him out yet. You know, he had a knockout on his resume, but he he wasn't just getting knocked out everywhere. So, um, it was a shocker because Amir Khan was hot at the time, If guys, if you all don't remember. Anyway, he also beat um, Matisse. And the reason why that was so memorable is because it was on the, and he talks about it a lot. It was on the undercar of Mayweather Canelo. And they really did. They stole the show. Him and Lucas Matisse, it was a very good fight. Danny Garcia came out on top. And Mayweather did his number on Canelo to the point where it, that fight just wasn't like it just was he took um Canelo to school so really to me and I mean I remember that fight live I watched it I wasn't there or anything but I watched it live so um that was really to me the best fight on the card Lucas Matisse and Danny Garcia um Mayweather did have a an immaculate performance but it just was so much so it was just like he just took Canelo to school 
So that that Danny Garcia Lucas Matisse fight was very memorable for that reason. It was a real good fight, and um, a lot of people felt that Danny was going to lose that fight. I thought that he could lose that fight, but Danny Garcia came through. Um, like I said, great run at one forty. Not as good at 147, but he did become a champion. Like I said, he did become a champion. The game's been good to him. Um, his team, Al Heyman, got him an opportunity to fight for a vacant title. That WBC title was vacant at the time. He moved up to 147, and um, he fought Robert the Ghost Guerrero for that for that belt as a vacant title. And, and honestly... Guerrero hadn't done anything to, you know, really to be able to fight for a title. But, hey, good promotion. You know what I'm saying? That's that why I say the game been good to Danny Garcia. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but at 147, he did go on to take his first loss and um, ended up losing, what, three fights at 147 he lost against sean porter he lost against keith thurman he lost against errol spence after errol spence came back off a car crash and errol spence really did a number to him he those other two fights was close sean porter was a close fight keith thurman was a close fight to me you know they were very close um and i i can understand why danny garcia felt that he could have won either one of those fights or both of them but with that Errol Spence fight, no. He knew he lost that fight. That was a very, very, like, it was it was shocking how Errol Spence came back from that car crash and put a number on Danny Garcia. But anyway, um, the game's been good to Danny Garcia, man. Nothing to hang his head about. Um, Two-weight class world champion. Um, he's made some money in the sport. He's also made some good investments outside of the ring. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, man, hey, go enjoy the fruits of your labor, man, while you have, you know, retired with all of your faculties intact. And, you know, hey, like I said, you made a good run. Nothing to hang your head about. On the other hand, Aries Landy Lar, hey, it may be the same thing for him, man. You made some money. Um, you came to America, did your thing. Um, you know, had a good career, came up short against Canelo, you know what I'm saying? And uh, which was a kind of a, con I ain't going to say controversial. A lot of people felt like Canelo won, but that it was a very close fight. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people did think that Ares Landy Lara could have got the nod for that fight. So Ares Landy Lara, man, great career. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can end your career as a champion and you be the two, uh, two weight division champion in your career on a good note. I mean, Hey, it is what it is, but it was a lackluster fight to say the least. Um, but Hey, I got to take my hat off to Ares Landy Lar as the older guy. He's over 40. He's still a champion and fighting at that level. He made a big statement, but I'm not sure, um, you know, Somebody that's able to put pressure on him, kind of like uh, Jared Hurd did in, that, in their fight. Man, it could be a bad night for Ares Landy Lar. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Carlos Adamas or somebody like that. A lot of people don't look at 160 as being a deep division right now. It's just not a money division. But, uh, you know, hey, you got some good fights that could be made there. You know, especially for hardcore boxing fans, but it's just not going to be big money fights, you know, because the names aren't as, you know, aren't as known, you know. But uh, but anyway, both guys, you know, hey, they got out of the fight. Um, both guys probably need to hang it up. Tell me what y'all think, man. It's Daddy P. Y'all let me know in the comment section. Like, hate, comment, subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time it goes.